This story is called You and Me, Morrowi. It's written by Kerry Hashmi and Felicity Marshall, and it's published by Puffin Books. I wonder what you think this story is about. Is there anything in the picture that you can see that gives you any clues? I can see a young girl pushing what looks like a little canoe out onto the river or the creek or billabong. I can also see the reflection of an indigenous boy, it looks like, in the water. I wonder who these two characters are and what they're doing. Let's start the story. We walk this same brown earth, you and me, Murrawee. Who do you think Murrawee is? Past the ancient granite rocks, we run down the slope to the river, hearts beating in time. I follow your bare footsteps. We move the same dust and bend the same grass in our stride. The water is sparkling in the sun and it calls us near. You've made a mudslide down the bank. You sit on it and squeal as you slip with the other children into the cold, clear water. Your uncle is fishing upstream. He warns you not to frighten the fish. I give the slippery dip a miss, take my shoes off and paddle near the edge. The mud is squidgy between my toes. My father calls to me to watch out for broken glass. We each pick up a stick and draw pictures in the same patch of river sand. You and me, Murrawee. You draw a kangaroo. Mine is meant to be a horse. There's the pictures there. We walk along the riverbank, balancing our way over the rocks and scratch at the lichen. I follow the footprints of someone's dog. And you think you've seen a wallaby spore. Our fathers are going out in their boats. They leave from the same little launching bay where the riverbank is low. My father has a rowboat. He's teaching my brother how to handle the oars. What do you think Marawi's father is teaching his little brother? Your father has a canoe. He's taking your brother to show him how to trap fish. We both watch them from the same spot on the shore in the shade of the old river red gum. We can see the scars on it where your father has cut his canoe. You can see it here. The ducks on the river expect food from campers. They swim up to me and I throw them some bread. Can you see Murrawee in the water? You know where their nest is. You swim across into the reeds to collect some eggs, which you give to your mother. She passes you her digging stick and asks you to gather some of the reed roots too. She'll cook them all tonight. And there's the young girl there, watching on. We climb up the path above the river. You and me, Murrawee. The magpies are nesting too. They swoop on us and we both run, ducking. The river water you are carrying splashes from your coolerman. What do you think a coolerman is? A cool breeze is picking up and it blows our hair in our faces. It brings the scent of food and the smoke of campfires. Our tummies rumble. I can smell sausages and onions frying. For you, the fish, the eggs and roots are baking. We share food with our families. The ants clean the crumbs and take them back to their nest as they've always done. These two campsites look the same. Do you think they're in the same place? How are they different? I can see that this one is Murrawee's campsite and he is an indigenous boy. This looks like a traditional indigenous cooking methods roasting fish on the fire. And this is a very different campfire. It's actually not a campfire, it's using a gas burner with a saucepan. 
and the girl is even using a tap. I wonder what is different or the same about that picture. As we nestle in by the campfires in the dark, your grandmother takes you into her arms and tells you the old, old stories of the river, its creation, its floods and its droughts. I strain to hear her stories, but they are lost in the winds of time. Instead, I listen with my family to songs on the radio, sung by people who have never seen this river. Why do you think the girl can't hear the stories of Murrawee's grandmother? We lie down in the same hollow in the sand, you and me, Murrawee. The night is cool. You lie between two fires and I snuggle into my sleeping bag. You hear the bunyip calling from the river. The people in the next tent keep me awake for a while. The moon shines on both our faces. We sleep under the same stars, unchanged yet ever changing, which sparks, which spark the like campfires in the sky. Where do you think the girl and Murrawee are? Do you think they know each other? We breathe the same air, you and me, Murrawee, but we will never meet, for we live 200 years apart. And perhaps the girl has been reading about a young man, a young boy called Murrawee and his adventures in the outback, in the bush, as an indigenous young person. Perhaps she would like to be like Murrawee, do you think? And that's the end of the story, You and Me, Murrawee.